All right, prayer. All earthly things with earth will fade away, but prayer grasps eternity. And I'm convinced of this, God does not hear prayer. He hears desperate prayer. Prayer is not a position, whether you need Prayer is not a position, it's a disposition. You get to the place where you'd rather sweat, you'd rather weep in his presence than laugh in anybody else's presence. You'd rather God whisper a speaking into your heart that breaks you. And somebody give you the prizes that all the world covets. Prayer is almost the greatest human privilege that we have. Well, good morning. Good morning. How are we doing today? Anybody have to walk in the rain? <laughs> One person. No, it was pretty dry when you guys were coming in? Yeah? Good, good. It wasn't when I came in. I'll tell you that much. But uh, welcome, everyone. We're so glad to have you uh, with us. Those that are uh, gathering with us live on location or those that are joining us online live from your living rooms or wherever you are right now. Just wanted to welcome uh, everybody today. Uh, as Pastor Alex said, as the video just teed up, uh, we are starting off this morning a brand new series. If this is your first time uh, joining with us here at Parkwood or uh, maybe online, first time checking in, this is a great week uh, to jump in on because, again, today we're launching brand new series on uh, prayer. Uh, this is, we're going to kind of walk through this uh, pretty much for the month of August, I think the first week of September. And uh, honestly, I'm just really, really excited. Uh, I'm really, really excited about this. But just before uh, we, we get into our teaching on prayer, I just want to give honor where honor is due. Uh, I have been away on vacation uh, for the past two weeks. And uh, in, in my leave, actually, Pastor Susie and Pastor Brian stood up here in the pulpit and just did a fantastic job. Come on, can we just, like, like so good. And, and one of the things that I love about this new season, uh, and there's many frustrations, obviously, but, but with, with us uh, moving onto the online platform, uh, even from my living, uh, living room, I was able to still follow with what was happening here uh, as I kind of watch through the live streams and uh, as, as Pastor Susie and Pastor Brian uh, fed us the word. And let me just say, if you missed it, go back and catch those two weeks because they were good meals, right? They were hearty meals. And uh, honestly, just wanted to say uh, uh, thank you and just give special appreciation to them. Uh, but they're gone. And now I'm here and you're stuck with me. Turn with me in your Bibles this morning to Matthew chapter 6. If you don't have a Bible with you, uh, all the verses are going to be on the screens in front of you. Those are either the screens above my head or your TV screen, your iPad, phone, whatever it is that you're looking at. All the Bible verses will uh, come up on whatever device or whatever screen you're looking at. So let's talk about prayer. Let's talk about prayer. Some of you just love prayer. Like, like when you wake up in the morning, you're that type of person, you don't even need an alarm clock, right? You just wake up in the morning and you're eager to like get down on your knees and start praying. You don't need a sermon series to inspire you. You don't need a song to encourage you. You're just day after day, week after week, just knocking it out of the park, home run after home run in the area of prayer. And that is true of some of you. But that is not true of all of you. There's another group, uh, my guess would be a much larger group um, than the first, that when it comes to the topic of prayer, um, we're, we're, we're not hitting home runs every single day. You don't wake up first thing in the morning and, you know, the first thing on your mind is, oh, I got to get praying. You know, so, no, no, th th there's a much larger group in this second group that, 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 quite honestly, you've just always struggled with prayer. You love Jesus, you're following Jesus, but when it comes to prayer, this has always been just an uphill battle. If we're brutally honest this morning, maybe we would even go as far as saying uh, prayer seems boring. 
or just kind of like a drag, especially now that we have Netflix and Disney Plus and all this other stuff, right? Like, like, and there's always been this wrestle, but then even in this camp, every now and then we muster up the courage and the strength to pray, and we make the master list. We come up with everything we can possibly think of. We're going to pray for world peace and world hunger and COVID and our job, and then you even go down your family lines. You got your cousins and your second cousins and your third cousins, you're, you've made the master list. You ever have that moment? Then you look down at your watch and it's, you've prayed through it all and it's been like two minutes. Yeah, you ever been there? And you're just like, oh man, your mind starts to wander. You're like, ah, oh, focus, right? Like just prayer seems difficult, right? There's, there, there's these moments and these situations that, that, that come that, that we don't even know what to pray. We don't know what to say. We don't know how to say it. Like I don't, like is it just me or anyone else ever been there? Like, like, right? Like, like, this is just some, some of the wrestle with prayer. If only God taught us how to pray. Well, he did. There's good news this morning. He actually did. That's why I'm really excited uh, to enter into this series because Jesus, in Matthew chapter 6, he's in the middle of his great Sermon on the Mount, he, he does this whole section on prayer. And what he does is he actually teaches his followers how to pray. But before he teaches us how to pray, he first teaches us how not to pray. Right? Someone right now is saying, oh, my mom said there's, there's no wrong way to pray. Well, Jesus disagrees with your mom, okay? Uh, there, there, there's actually... Two big warnings that Jesus throws out in the topic of prayer. And that's what we're going to spend our time with today. In fact, if you're taking notes, it's always good to take notes. Uh, The title of my sermon, it's up on the screen here, is How Not to Pray. The rest of the month going into September, we're going to talk about how to pray. But I'm starting where Jesus started, which is in the how not. So if you're ready, just say, I'm ready. All right, awesome, awesome. Matthew chapter 6, we're going to go to verse 5. Here we go. Jesus teaching here and says, And when you pray, do not... Yeah, hold on, let's just pause. Let's just pause. Jesus says, when you pray. Yeah, that's a big word. He doesn't say, if you pray. Jesus assumes here... That for the person that is truly following him, we will be led in a lifestyle of prayer. To him, it's not a a question of if, it's just a matter of when. So he says this, when you pray, do not be like, this is the first big warning, the hypocrites. Let me hear you say hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So, all right, this is, this is great. Jesus starts off his, his great teaching on prayer by talking about how not to pray. And in so doing, he takes straight aim at a group whom he calls the hypocrites. Many would actually see these groups later in Jesus' teaching. He kind of blasts the, the Jewish ruling leaders and calls them hypocrites. These are, these are people who, who stand in the synagogues and on the street corners in order to be seen by others. The, the, the actual Greek word for hypocrite literally just means an actor or, or a pretender. And, and Jesus says, yeah, don't do that. Right? Jesus says when it comes to prayer, don't be a hypocrite. Don't, don't act. Don't pretend. Now, now It's very important that we understand here that Jesus isn't against praying in public. I know it might seem like that, but that's actually not what he's saying at all. Jesus himself prayed in public many times. Like many times. So so here, he's not necessarily saying, don't pray in public. What he's getting at is the motivation of the heart behind some hypocrites in why they were praying in public. Right? He's, he's saying, hey, be, beware of, 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 of this thing that, that, that can get inside of any single one of us that we, that, that we pray to God, but we do that in a way in order to be seen by others. And that is not prayer. Jesus simply 
just lays it out. This is the first way how not to pray. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't be an actor. Don't be a performer. Let, 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 me, let me explain. Let me explain. My daughter, Nora. Yes, get over it. It's another Nora story. <laughs> My daughter, Nora, three years old, uh, has now entered into the phase. I don't know, parents, young kids, if, if you've been here, but it's the phase of watch me. A- any parents remember that phase? That phase of just, it doesn't matter what she's doing. It's watch me, watch me, watch me. And so this is just life right now. And you know what? It was cute for the first 10 times she did it. But now we're in like round a thousand, and it's just like, watch me, watch me. So uh, honestly, one of the blessings right now, especially in this hot weather, uh, we have a pool. And so uh, when I was on vacation, we basically spent the vacation in the pool. And uh, so she's uh, just getting adventurous, and she's learning all these new ways to jump in, and we catch her, and all this stuff, and she's learning to float on her back. But every new thing that she learns over and over and over again, it's watch me, watch me, watch me. And so... I'm in the pool with her, and she's jumping in and out and in and out, and every single time, it's, watch me, mommy, who is just a few feet over. Watch me, mommy. Watch me, mommy. And it's going on and on. And, and honestly, I had this moment. I'm, I'm, I'm in the pool, and I'm like, okay, Danny, you're a pastor. You're a preacher. You can figure this out. Somehow convince her to stop saying, watch me. So I thought about it, and I said, you know what, Nora? I said, God is watching you all the time. He, he never takes his eyes off of you, not for one single moment. You don't need to ask mommy to watch you every single time you jump in the pool. And so she looked, and I could just see the wheels turning in her head. She's thinking. She looks up into the sky, and she says, watch me, God. And then she jumps in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't really get across what I was trying to get her. Yeah. She's in this phase, right? She wants to be seen. She wants to be seen. And you know what? Honestly, she's three years old and it's kind of cute right now. You know when it's not cute? When you're 30 or 50, 60, 70. And sure, we're not saying those words. We're not actually yelling out loud, everybody watch me, watch me, but that's what you want. Deep inside, right? That's the motivation, right? And, and, And what Jesus lays out here is he says, listen, if you're not careful, this glory hunger that starts at a very young age, if you're not careful, man, you never grow out of that. Sure, you learn to stop saying the words externally, but internally your motives are still the same. And if we're not careful, what we actually do is, is it, it, it's not just like general aspects of life, man, this bleeds into how we even talk to God. If we're not careful, if that glory hunger is not dealt with, then what ends up happening is we end up as adults many years later praying to God in a way that wants to be seen. And Jesus simply lays it out right here and just says, yeah, if that's you, you're a hypocrite, an actor. You're a performer. Like this is not how we pray at all. And and Jesus just lays out, like, if there's something inside of us that every single time we pray or we we stand up to sing the songs that we sing, if there's this thing inside of you that's just hoping somebody see me, somebody look at me, somebody hear how eloquent my words are, somebody see how spiritual I am. And and listen, there's nothing wrong with, with using your words and nothing wrong with raising your hands. There's nothing wrong with praying in public. What's wrong is the motivations of our heart, and this is what Jesus is exposing. And he says, that's not how you pray. So the first thing that Jesus lays out is, is he, he just lays out, it's, it's, it's not being a hypocrite. You, you know what prayer is actually more like? In, in my silly story about my daughter, you know that moment where my daughter says, watch me, God? Not to impress God. Prayer, prayer is us turning to God and saying, God, I'm here for you. I don't care what others think. I don't care what others, God, I'm here for you. That's prayer. 
That's prayer. So the first big warning, the first big thing we have to watch out for here is just playing the role of the hypocrite. But Jesus isn't done yet. Go with me back into the Bible, verse 7. He says, and he's going to give the second warning here. And when you pray, again, the when, not the if, when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father know what's you, what you need before you ask him. So Jesus starts off and he says, yeah, don't be like the hypocrites. Don't pretend. And now he shifts focus and he says, oh, and also don't be like the pagans who keep on babbling. Uh, maybe some of your translations use the word uh, instead of pagans, it might say Gentiles or um, it might use the word even heathens there. Uh, listen, it's all stressing the same point. Uh, the pagan, the heathen, the Gentile, these are all just words that are used for anybody that wasn't worshiping Yahweh God, the one true God of the Israelites in the Bible. So if you're not worshiping Yahweh, you're a pagan. And see, here's what was very common in the first century. What was very common in this Greco-Roman world that the New Testament was written in was pagan prayer. And pagan prayer was basically mindless repetition over and over and over again. We actually read kind of one of these stories, Acts chapter 19, in the great Greco-Roman city of Ephesus. It says that a group of people got together and they started chanting like a mantra over and over for two hours straight. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians for two hours. Nothing else was said. Like, th that's not prayer. That's mindless repetition. Or, or how about 1 Kings uh, chapter 18? R remember, the story, um, uh, remember the story of uh, Elijah and the prophets of Baal? Right? They were calling down fire from heaven, and the prophets of Baal start praying to Baal. And, 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 and the Bible says this, that for half a day, half a day, all they said was, O oh, Baal, answer us. 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 For half a day. Jesus is picking up on some of these errors, right? And he, and he just says, listen, yeah, prayer is, is not you pretending or being an actor. It's not you being a hypocrite. But it's also not mindless, mechanical repetition. You know, it's also important, very, very important for us to understand. Jesus is actually not saying uh, repetition is bad. He's actually saying mindless mechanical repetition is bad. Jesus prayed on repeat. There are certain prayers that Jesus prayed the same prayer multiple times over and over and over. Jesus isn't against praying in repetition. What Jesus is against is praying in mindless mechanical repetition. You know, you know that spot where you've just completely disengaged your mind from what you're saying? So, 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 so we're in this uh, series on prayer. In the next few weeks, uh, what we're going to do as we continue through Matthew chapter 6, we're, 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 we're going to get into this great text where it, 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 it talks about the Lord's Prayer. Anybody ever said the Lord's Prayer before? Anybody bold enough to admit you've said the Lord's Prayer in a mindless mechanical way? Good, I saw a bunch of hands. Okay, it's not just me, right? Uh, it's funny, it's funny. Right after, right after Jesus says, don't pray like the pagans, don't babble, don't go into mindless mechanical repetition, he gives the Lord's Prayer. And unfortunately for so many, that's exactly what we've done. We've turned the Lord's Prayer itself into mindless mechanical repetition. So, so I grew up going to a private school. Uh, it was actually Temple Christian Academy here. Uh, went there from JK into grade eight. Uh, honestly, so many great things out, out of that school. One of the things that uh, every single morning we would do chapel. And uh, the chapels would always kind of, I actually had to ask Pastor Susie, who also went to the school because my mind's a little foggy. But uh, we, we'd all start the same way. You walk in and we would sing O Canada and then there would be some sort of devotional, or we would sing a couple other songs, and then without fail, um, right before chapel was ended every single day, is we would repeat the Lord's Prayer. We would recite the Lord's Prayer every single day. So I did the math, um, that by the time that I was 13 years old, I recited the Lord's Prayer 1,900 times. 
That's just every single day of the week kind of going through. Um, 1,900 times that I recited the prayer. Now, my comment here is not about the school or about any other student. I am speaking for myself. 1,900 times I said the prayer. 1,900 times I echoed the words. And if I'm completely honest, I don't know how many of those I was actually praying. You see, what I did is I, is I took the words that Jesus teaches and then I went into praying like a pagan. I wasn't a hypocrite. I wasn't doing it to be seen. I just switched sides now into the role of the pagan and it just became mindless mechanical repetition. It was babbling. You know, and, and, and it's unfortunate, but this is... The issues that didn't just exist 2,000 years ago, these are issues that exist today. So Jesus, before we get into anything on what prayer actually is and how to pray, and honestly, stick with us this month because I honestly believe where we're gonna go is really gonna help us understand prayer. But Jesus starts first, not with how to pray, he starts first with how not to pray. Because he has to remove some of that stuff that's inside of us. We kind of have to deconstruct before we can, can build up something fresh. And so, so I, honestly, I don't know where you guys are at today. I don't know online where you're at today. I, I, don't, I don't know uh, how many of us really m uh, struggle with these two things directly. Maybe you're here today and, and that wrestle has just always been on the side of the hypocrite. Just you, you know that's true. You pray and you sing and you, you encounter God in a way that you really want people to see how great you are. And maybe God needs to deal with that inside of you. Or maybe you're on the other side. And, and, and you pray and you worship and you sing and you encounter God in a way that is just mindless. Absolutely mindless. It's like you're going through the motions over and over. Maybe you've been in church since you were young and, and, and you've learned how to play church. You've learned when the song gets a little bit louder, that's when the hands go up. We've learned that in certain moments, that's when the head goes down. We've learned when the pastor looks in your direction, that's when we look really spiritual. And I know this because I've done it. You see, these, these aren't issues that just existed 2,000 years ago, these are human issues that Jesus is dealing with us today. So, so why does he go here? Why does Jesus start his great teaching on prayer uh, with, here's what you don't do. Don't go here. Don't do this. Don't do... Why? Because what he's doing is he's completely deconstructing how all these people understood prayer. Prayer is not to appease the gods. Right? We, we, don't, we, don't, we don't pray in a way, a mindless mechanical repetition. We, it's not about our glory. It's about his glory. Like, honestly, I, I love the Westminster Catechism. just says the chief end of man. What it's all about is the glory of God. Prayer is all about the glory of God. And when we make it about us or we disengage mentally, Man, it's just not prayer. We then turn into religion. In Jesus here, what he's doing is he's combating religion for the sake of relationship. You see, the big problem with being a hypocrite and the big problem with mindless mechanical repetition, babbling like a pagan, that's not relationship. It's just not relationship. It's already been said a few times in this text. Uh, we're really gonna get into it next week, but prayer is given in the context of relationship with the Father. It's like, that's the whole point. But when you're mindless about it and when we're doing it for show, there's nothing relational at all. And Jesus' fight here right in the very beginning is he's trying to kill every religious thing that clings to us so that we can actually enter into a relationship with God. You know, there's this great story, and I'll just close here. In Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 18, Jesus later in his ministry tells a, a parable about prayer. And what he does is he says, in Luke chapter 18, he says, there was this one day when these two men went into the temple specifically to pray. And he says these two different guys, one was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. So the Pharisee, if you don't know, um, Pharisees were the religious 
ruling authorities of the day. They were experts in the Torah. They were expert, experts in the law, experts in the, specifically the, the first five books of the Bible. They were the leaders. They were the ones leading the way. As far as like the, the highest rung on the social ladder, that's the Pharisees, okay? Top of the line, top dogs in their community. But then there was another guy who also went to pray that day, and he's a tax collector. Tax collectors, if you don't know, are the lowest rung on the social ladder, not like the Pharisee. Tax collectors, see, what you need to understand is this, that they honestly were just wicked, wicked men. What they did is they, they actually purchased the right from Rome to raise taxes for Rome in support of a suppressive army that was, that was responsible for like rape and murder of like thousands of women. They, 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 they betrayed their own countrymen. They betrayed their own neighbors. Wicked, wicked men. And so here you have these two different men, one at the top of the pecking order and the other at the bottom. One who is a ruling authority and the other, honestly, who is just on the fringe of society, both go into the temple to pray. And it says that the Pharisee stood up in the center. He's, it, it, Jesus is emphasizing that this whole thing, he's doing this to be seen by others. He, he stands up and he, and he starts proclaiming, God, I thank you that I'm not like all these broken people around me. He actually specifically points out the tax collector, God, I thank you that I'm not like him. That's awkward. He goes on and on. He's saying, God, I, I tithe all this money and I, I give and I have, I have such a spirit of generosity about me. And I fast. He's making a scene. He's drawing attention to himself. He's playing the role of the hypocrite. Then there's this other guy, right? This other guy comes in, the, the, the tax collector on the lowest rung of society. Many think he shouldn't have even walked into the temple that day. Walks in. And it says that, the Bible says he stood at a distance. It, it, it's emphasizing this point. He's not a hypocrite. He's not doing this to be seen. It says he can't even lift his, his head towards heaven. But it says he beats his chest and he cries out, mercy. God, I need mercy. God, I need mercy. And you know what Jesus says? Jesus says the tax collector was justified, not the Pharisee. Jesus says, oh, I heard both prayers, but I only answered one. And it was the tax collector. Why? Because maybe the tax collector understood something about God that the Pharisee wasn't getting. It's not about religion. It's not about what others see and what others think, and it's not about appeasing God, and it's not about mindless repetition. It's about a relationship with God. And somehow, in this broken, humbled state, this tax collector, this monster of a man, finds forgiveness and salvation, and God says, yes, you get it, I'll answer that prayer. Yes. See, this is, why don't we stand up all across this room? So Jesus starts off on prayer. Where we're going, it's, honestly, I think it's going to be really, really good, but we have to start here. We have to start here, because honestly, I think today God's deconstructing things inside of us. I think God is, is removing things that need to be removed inside of us. And I don't know what that is inside of you. We're, 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 we're going to sing this song, How Great Thou Art. Um, we started off the service with it. It's a fun song. It's a great song. It's an oldie, but oh, it's a goodie. And um, I think right now what we need to exchange is uh, our pursuit of our glory for the glory of God. If there's even an ounce of that in the room right now that we want to be seen and we want to do this for others. You know what? As we sing this song, 
I pray that it wouldn't be mindless or mechanical, and I pray that we wouldn't sing this in a song in a way to be seen. God only knows the motive of your heart, but as we sing this song, it's, it's a prophetic declaration that our upward focus to God is all about God, not about us, not about us, but about him. So as we sing this all across this room, balcony, pods, main floor, in your living rooms, wherever you are, as we sing this song, let us worship the God of glory. Let us pray the words of this song to the God of glory and proclaim that it is all about him and not about us.
So Lord God, in this place, right here and right now, we just proclaim, Lord, that it is all about you. That God, right now, Lord, God, we, we just ask, Lord, that you would, God, forgive us, God, for times that we've made it about us. God, I pray that you would forgive us for times that we have just mindlessly gone about uh, our, our, our life with you. God, where we've gone through the motions, where we've played the game. God, right now, Lord, we just, God, we just ask, God, would you forgive us? God, would you cleanse us? God, would you, would you break down in us what you need to break down so we can build something healthy in its place? God, what we want is you. God, we don't want religion. Lord, we want a relationship with you. And God, that's good because that's what you want with us. So Lord God, forgive us for the religious spirit that we default back into time and time again. But God, I pray that we would run after you and you alone. Great are you, Lord, how great thou art. So God, it is all about you, Jesus Christ. God, I pray over this next month, Lord, as we dive into your words, your teachings, Jesus. God, I pray that you would lead us. God, I pray that you would open up eyes. God, I pray that you would lead us in your ways alone. So God, our prayer is this, to you be all the glory. To you be all the glory. And we ask this in your name, Jesus. And everybody said? Well, come on, one more time from the, our bellies. Ready? And everybody said? Amen. 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 amen.